Right, okay. Um, so this is the first event this year, first Secret Industries event this year. Um, just want to say um, thanks to everyone that's come. Um, I'll do more detailed thanks at the end, but I just thought it'd be a good way of starting the session off. Um, I'd like to start with an introduction. Um, and I mean, I could introduce everyone, but I think it'd be good if each of you guys could talk through uh, A, who you are, uh, B, what it is that you do uh, in, in the music industry, and, and crucially, how, how that relates to you kind of managing your own business. So what, what businesses do you manage? Yeah. So I guess if we could start on maybe that side. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Cheers. I think most people know me in here. I know some people might not have had a class with me yet. But I think the reason, Ben, you've asked me to do this is because I kind of run my own freelance engineering company uh, and bits of a PA business as well, as I'm sure we'll go a bit into later. Uh, but yeah, that is my main job. This, this job here that I do, teaching you guys, is a secondary thing for me. My main business is sound engineering and PA hiring, so I think that's why you've asked me to come along, isn't it, Ben? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I also wear two hats as well. My name is Niall McGuinness. I'm the digital content manager for Liverpool Sound City. Um, so it's a big festival going into its sixth year up in Liverpool. We have 300 bands play over about 25 venues for three nights. We've got um, a two-day industry conference and an expo as well. So. We deal with the music industry, film industry, um, games and tech industry as well. Um, I've also started up my own little limited company called Milk Slice. Um, and Milk Slice has been set up to deliver some apps and services that support the industry, uh, well, music industry specifically. I'll talk a bit more later on about the actual product, but yeah, that, that's my background anyway. Hello everyone, uh, my name's John Baker. I have uh, been working as a professional musician for the last 12 years, everything from studio work to writing, but mainly as a gigging function musician. Uh, for the last seven years, I've been running a function band called the Funtime Frankies, which basically plays weddings, parties, anything that pays, basically. And around that, I have set up a limited company called Fluff Alley Limited, which runs the affairs of the band and also works as an ad hoc entertainment agency for other bands that I do gig shares with. Hello, I'm Louis. Um, I'm a, primarily a performer, um, but uh, I also run a small record label called Debt Records, which is sort of a, more of a, a league of um, self-published artists rather than a, a sort of a traditional kind of music business in the old sense. Um, I'm also part of Unconvention, which is a series of um, events which happen all around the world, um, which is to try to uh, demystify the music industry in wherever country it happens to be in and bring like-minded, creative people together from the technical side of things as well as the artistic side of things and also sometimes the political and social side of things as well. So. Uh, a kind of juggler of many things. Right, great, okay, so this is everyone. Uh, I think I know most of you in here. My name's Ben. I'm not going to go too much in, into detail about my background because I'm just here to kind of get this discussion going, all right? So um, that's me. Um, leading on from that, I wondered, because a lot of what today's about is, is about success, and so, some might call it making it. Um, one thing I've noticed is that one person's idea of success in the music industry is very different from another's. So I wondered if between you, you could clarify, or not between you, but individually, if you could clarify for you what success is, like at what point will you know when, when you've made it, so to speak. All right. Um, so let's go back the other way this time, if that's all right. Yeah, um, I uh, profoundly loathe the, 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 the theme of making it. I mean, okay. I, I, well, the, you know, that, that phrase I think is very unhelpful. Um, I think it sort of suggests that there is a point where you, you can reach a destination and, you, and you've made it, and, that's, and then all you've got to do is sort of prolong that thing. So, you know, you can have your Christmas number one, and then you have that, and that you are forever you are whoever, Slade, or something like that, you know. Whereas really, the, I would define success as being able to just keep on going, really, because the music industry, indeed all creative industries and all industries are forever changing. They're never static. They're always in a state of flux. Um, so it's a question of um, keeping your, your ears and eyes open and just um, j just growing with how things are going. I mean, you know, 
10 years ago, we wouldn't be you know, discussing things like, you know, um, online marketing, that sort of stuff. We'd just be going on about, about hits, whereas now it's, it's all about online presence. But then in 10 years from now, it could be about, uh, you know, thoughts, you know, <laughs> spreading around the, the cloud. Who knows? It's just a question of, um, of, of being able to survive, I think, and be sustainable. And that's what I say. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with Louis. Making it, you never make it. You have to always keep on moving forward. But in the context of my line of work, making it just means making sure I've got enough paid gigs coming in, having a good reputation, just making sure my diary is full. Yeah. And that's, it's, that's it, quite simply. With every business, any business, no business has ever made it. They can be successful, but as you can see, big businesses can fall. And don't be under any illusion. If you're working in the music industry, you're working in a business, you're working in the industry. So it's always about moving forward and making sure you're sustainable, making money. Yeah, I think I agree with the sort of not liking the phrase make it. Because there's a management theory, which I, I don't know if you're going to study or not, but about the people lies, rise to the level of their incompetence. And if that's what you're saying, that making it is your, your ceiling, then that's your level and you're not going to go on. It's about getting to, to you know, being sustainable. I think that is a really, really important word. Um, for me, in, in my business with Milk Slice, it's about getting our services and our apps to market them getting traction um, and people being interested in them, but the passion that I have for doing them, um, which I'll describe the product in a bit, it's not probably in this bit, but it's about supporting the music industry and musicians, and passion's really important in, in, in trying to make it. You have to want it. it it's not for someone else, it, it's for yourself, is what I would say. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think. I think it should say surviving it <laughs> <laughs> rather than making it and that is the thing and I think I did say that to a lot of you in your auditions as well as it might look glamorous from the outside but there is no glamour involved in it um, whatsoever it's just hard work but it also brings a lot of benefits that I love working in the music industry for me <coughs> defining making it though for me would say I earn all my money out of the music industry. I'm able to pay my bills, my mortgage, feed my kids, and survive off the music industry alone. I no longer have to be a postman or delivering something else, you know what I mean? I can make it out of my ultimate passion, uh, and that defines making it for me. I think. Uh, just on that, could, could, I, could the same be said for all of you? Is it at the point when you're making a full-time living from it? From just specifically for music related acts or it's because I know some people are quite happy just doing it kind of like they'll have their day job and then they're happy going out and gigging in the evening is, is that where you're at or I think it definitely depends on on the individual I mean you, you, you do um, you know, function band which is you know, the, pretty much the only way you can sort of yeah. <laughs> make a proper amount of money from playing you know, an instrument um, but, but some people would, would just want to sing their own songs and they're happy to do that once a week um, in, in the pub, um, uh, but they don't want to have to play you know, Frank Sinatra's songs or something like that, so that would be for them uh, a compromise. But I think it basically comes down to what your ultimate aim is within the music industry. If you want to do your own songs, then that's what you've got to aim for, and you've actually got to actually uh, work hard at doing that. In the context of doing a function band, um, well, basically, yeah, I've just got to it, it sounds quite simple, but hard to do. You've just got to work at that and focus all your efforts into your ultimate aim because, if you, yeah, because if you, yeah, when you're saying you're making it, you've got to actually have an aim at the end of the day, so I think that makes sense. And it's about um, listening to what people want as well because when I first started out, I really wanted to be kind of the next Paul Simon, next Nick Drake, the sort of prettier side of songwriting. And if anyone's ever seen me play, they know I don't do that at all. Uh, I, I sort of, um, I put in a, sort of a funny song towards the end of my set just to get everyone to like me. And then gradually the funny songs became the entire set. And, and then it became this ridiculous clowning kind of thing. And that's what I make my living doing now, going around the country and, and around Europe, uh, doing the, the strange, you know, high kicks and stage dives and that sort of stuff. So in a, in a way, I, by, by having to sort of focus on the stuff which I didn't really want to do when I was 18, 20, um, but that, you know, that became a career, that was a, a difficult choice. But 
you know, it's yeah, all it was, about choice, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite similar for how I started out. When I first started out doing music, it was with the aim of doing solely my own music. And so I focused my entire life around that. And the way that I enabled myself to do that was at weekends, was playing pubs, clubs, weddings, anything that was going to give me money, anything that meant I didn't need to work in an office. Any, so that would mean that I would free up my time during the week just to solely focus on the originals. And I got quite far. But then it came to a point where I was making more and more money of doing function work. And it just seemed like a no-brainer to actually then solely concentrate on that. And now, basically, I do it full time. And I've got, I, you know, I love, live quite comfortably. And it also means that I have a lot of time to sleep, which is always good. Sleep is good. Yeah, I actually started out as a musician as well. Um, I was a drummer, field drummer. Um, but in all the bands I was in, I was the, the sort of always the fifth member who did all the management side of things. And as I did that, I was like, well, actually, this is kind of what I like better um, because I wasn't very good at drums for a start. Um, so I was never going to be able to be, be make a living out of it. Um, and I was like, well, Bands are always going to need managers, and the industry is always going to need managed. So I moved that way, and then slowly moved into working at events instead of managing bands specifically. And with I'm a big nerd. I'm such a geek. I love games and iPhones and all that there sort of caper. And I was like, well, here, hold on. How can I marry my sort of personal hobby with working in the music industry, um, as well as supporting the industry? So that's sort of. A nugget of where I, how I've ended up where I am. So at Sound City, with the digital content management role, it's not just about what we do online, but it's also about how we interact with digital businesses to make sure that just like the way our festival manager um, works with the bands to make sure the right bands are playing the festival, I'm working with all the digital industries and tech companies to make sure that what we're talking about at the festival or how the festival shaped works for them as well. Because in a weird way, they're coming to do a performance just like a musician would. Um, so it's making sure that it, it works. Yeah. yeah, cool. It is options, isn't it? And not turning options down, I think. <coughs> I came here to college, what, well, I'm not saying how many years ago, um, <laughs> but as a musician as, with a guitar and some songs, thinking that's where I wanted to go. And But I took all the options that were given to me and landed very lucky as an engineer, really. Uh, I did have to blag a bit because I was unsure about what I'm knobs and faders actually did but I read a lot of books before my first gig uh, but I stuck at it and you know I never thought I'd be an engineer to be quite honest but that door opened never turn it down it brings so many other opportunities but I think that's what you got to a bit like you're saying about the management opportunity they yeah. don't come along like they do yeah. so you've got to take them when whenever them options arise take them Plus, there will be other people waiting to do them as well. However, to play devil's advocate, you don't take every option because sometimes by taking one option, you're cutting your, you know, cutting your nose off yeah, despite I, your face. Well, yeah, There's I guess that so. As well, um, so you can end up in a situation that then you've you've lost options. But yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm saying opportunities. I think yeah, really um, yeah. more than anything. I'm yeah. wouldn't turn them down. I think I've always had the attitude where. It might not be true, and it doesn't seem to be in this local area, particularly for like engineering types, but I always assumed that there'd be a massive queue for jobs like that. So my attitude was, God, you've got to really want to do that job, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when I got it, I was like, right, I'm never having a night off. I'm, I'm always going to be reliable. I'm never going to let people down, because I thought, if I do, there's going to be a queue of people. Because I've always thought, if I got the evening post on a Thursday night and saw, Sound engineer opportunity, really good money per hour, uh, meet loads of bands, loads of interesting people, never the same people each night, which is a massive bonus. Um, I'd be like, wow, you know what I mean? I'd, so I think you've got to, if you've got opportunities like that, definitely I'd take. definitely agree with never turning down work because if you prove yourself to be reliable, it increases your reputation and you get more work. Yeah. It's, when it comes down to it, in creative industries, more so than normal like office jobs, you have to work hard, a lot harder than you would if you just basically worked in an office. Yeah, definitely. And the, and the rock and roll side of it is just theatre. I mean, really, no one's like that. I, I was talking to someone who, who was a vocal coach, and they were saying how the Motley Crew manager would be at the side of the stage with you know sort of five bottles of 
scotch with that much scotch left in it, so sort of swirling around. And he'd hand them out to them, and they'd get into the car, you know, with holding these bottles, going, and then they'd get in there, hand all of them back again afterwards, and use the same little dregs of scotch for every single gig for a three month tour. Because you can't, you know, be pissed every night for three months, you know, around yeah. the world and that sort of stuff. So I, mean, I did the tour, and, and uh, the promoter said to us, Oh, we've got no tea or coffee because the band last night pissed in the kettle. And I think that band's not going to work here again, then, you know, it's, it's really annoying <laughs> that that's happened, you know, but yeah, yeah, professional. Yeah, yeah I think. Musicians, on the whole, have a bad reputation just through folklore and actually because there are a lot of bad musicians who are, when it comes down to it, unprofessional. If you want to make it in this industry, first and foremost, you have to be professional. And that means not pissing in the kettle. <laughs> it's a metaphor so, for the whole thing, don't piss in the kettle. <laughs> we're starting to move into some areas that we're going to cover in no. a bit. Um, so I mean that's there's, there's no harm in that. We'll come back to that later. But just just to round this little section off, um, before we have a little bit of music, um, just could I just ask, and we'll we'll start at Dan's end if that's okay. Have you made it yet? <laughs> or are you? So let me rephrase that. Are you making it currently? Are you still? Are you where you want to be now? I'd, I'd, I'd go back to the beginning and say well, I'm surviving it currently still. Um, I never, I can never rest on my laurels. I've got right. to keep going at advertising, marketing. Just recently, I've rung a new venue up. Uh, you can never rely, rely on what you've just got. I don't yeah. think so. I'm okay. constantly looking for new venues, keeping my business card out there, uh, just keeping the word out really. So is that a yes then? If you're surviving, uh, I, I don't think I can say that because you just don't know what's around the corner, do you? So I don't okay. know. Okay, but today, uh, today <laughs> I'm really tired because I only finished a gig at R2 last night, <laughs> and I had to get up teaching at night this morning. So I'm making it. Yeah, hard work. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes and no. Um, All right. I think ideally, uh, Milk Slice, which is my own company, that would be sort of making enough money to feed me, but at the moment it really isn't. Um, I'm lucky that my day job is in the industry as well, uh, but the day I can wake up and say that that's my business and I've employed you know, a squad of people and it's our product that we're working with every day, absolutely. Yeah. That's not to say that what I'm doing now, I don't absolutely love. I mean, yeah. I'm promoting everyone else's products, but that, that's still great. Um, I'm still really pleased to be in the industry, but so yes and no. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say no, I, I haven't made it, because if I stop gigging right now, then I won't be able to survive for too much longer. That's, that's, that's one of the drawbacks from being effectively self-employed in the music industry. If you don't work, you don't get paid. So until I have enough money to uh, just sit on my ass and do nothing, then I'll <laughs> make so it. So that's making it for you then? Yeah. yeah. So, so similar for me. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think if I did just sit still, I wouldn't feel like it. I, I was making it because it was sort of, the, the whole enjoyment of it is, is, yeah. is doing it. But I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I, I'm not behind any of my electricity bills or anything like that. I've okay. still got, you know, water's coming out of the tap and that kind of thing. So, right. you know, I, I think, think, yeah, I guess so. I mean, the fact that I do sing my own material and I, and I get to tour around the world and that sort of stuff, that's definitely, that's really up there. That's, that is the dream and I am living that. But if I stopped, if I broke my leg, and I couldn't uh, perform for a month, then I'd be in a lot of trouble. Okay. So yes and no, I suppose. Feel free to not answer this, cause it, but um, are you managing to put any, any money away? Are you managing to save to get to that point? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. I wouldn't be doing this solely unless long term that, you know, I, I would be able to effectively survive without doing it. Okay. But it's going to take a little bit longer. All right. Bit, bit way to go. A little bit per side. I generally put my royalties into sort of a separate thing, so because you can't really budget for, for PRS royalties. So when they do come, you go, oh, that's, I didn't yeah. know they're playing on that stage or something. Like that. So that's quite good, you know. Uh, but but no, not really, not very much. No, no pension. Oh, all right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, I think we're going to talk about it later about risk. Anything that I do have extra, that's getting applied straight into milk slice. Yeah. <coughs> personal investment. Okay. So if you know, everything was rosy in the garden. Yes, I am putting it away because that's my future. But, you know, next week it could be dead. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, great. Uh, I think I'm probably, I don't know, maybe a bit different. I think that's why I went into teaching, really, just to guarantee that bit of a salary there. Because um, I get paid, I'm guaranteed that each month, yeah. whether there's 10 gigs, 20 gigs, I'm still going to get paid for teaching. 
and that puts money into a pension. So I feel lucky in that sense, really. Yeah. And my other money, I, I try then not to spend any money I get for engineering, just live off my salary. Yeah. Uh, but some months it does work, some months it doesn't work. We, it's Again, it's that survival, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, right. Well, thanks for answering that question. It was a little bit personal. Vulgar. <laughs> Vulgar. Uh, money doesn't matter. It's just all about the music. Yeah, it's all about music, right. <laughs>